Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to simplify paths using a free plugin for GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.30 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that guys, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. And you can get more by becoming a DMD premium member and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Here is the website where you can download this free plugin. It's called Simplify. You're gonna click this first download button here and that's going to download a zip folder to your computer. You're going to want to extract the contents of this. So right click and go to extract all and choose the location on your computer where you want to extract it. And it should look like this once it's extracted. It's just a single file and you're going to click and drag this file into your GIMP plugins folder. If you're not sure where that plugins folder is, I do have a help article on how to download and install plugins for GIMP. I do use this plugin as the example for that article, so it goes through the entire process of how to install this into your GIMP. So here I am inside of GIMP. We're gonna be working with a couple of examples for this tutorial, so three examples total. So for this first one, we're going to create a path in the shape of the text here. I did just use this Adrenaline font, which is a free font I downloaded from the internet. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to downloading and installing free fonts in GIMP. Check that out if you're not sure how to do that. But I've just typed GIMP here, and what I'll do is Alt-click on this, and that's going to create a selection area around my text. I'll come over to paths and I'm going to click to create a path from this selection. And I'll hit control shift A to deselect that. So here is our path. If I grab the paths tool from the toolbox and I click on this path, you're gonna see all the nodes that are created automatically here for this path. So if I hold control and zoom in a little bit, you can see there are a ton of nodes here. So let's say we wanted to simplify this path. There are a variety of reasons you would want to simplify a path. So for example, in this case, we have a ton of nodes and that can create some jagged looking curves. So by simplifying it, we get some smoother looking curves and that's helpful in cases like when we want to stroke this text. So to use that plugin we just installed, I'm going to right click and go to tools, modify path and simplify. So it's at the very bottom here of your right click menu. So I'll choose simplify. And we have a bunch of options here and explanations and I've played around with these. So one downside to this is it doesn't have a reset button where we can reset back to the default values. But for the first value here, this is for allowed deviation from the original path. So basically what this is gonna do is simplify your path by getting rid of some of these nodes. In some cases that can cause what's called a deviation from the original path. So basically the new path will take on a new shape in order to simplify the original path. So this is just saying that you are going to set the threshold for how much deviation you're allowing and I believe it's based on pixels. So if I set this to one, that's basically saying you're allowing for very little deviation. If I set this to zero, that means no deviation and a lot of times when you set this to zero, it won't have any change, so you do need to have some sort of deviation here. I recommend you go with one if you want very little. The next option is detail threshold, and that is going to allow you to set how many details you're allowing this to keep. So if you set this to a lower number, it's going to keep more details. A higher number is going to get rid of more details. The next option is the corner angle threshold, and this is basically allowing you to set the maximum corner angle for your new path. So basically, if you don't want certain corners going beyond a certain degree, you can set it here. In this case, right now I have it set to 90. That's way too low in my opinion. I believe by default it comes with 120. And I'll go through an example here of the various corner angles and what they look like. Preserve straight edges is for whenever you have straight edges or straight lines in between the nodes instead of curves. So usually when you're simplifying a path, it's going to convert a lot of straight edges to curves just to sort of help get rid of some nodes. But if you don't want that to happen, you wanna keep those straight edges, you can come over here and click the button and it'll change this to yes. And that will preserve any straight lines you have going on and not convert them to curves in order to simplify. I'm gonna keep that set to no. 
And the working level from my testing, I believe, is allowing this to use more computing power in order to basically produce a more accurate result based on your selections up top here. So if you want this to be faster and you're not concerned about the accuracy of the final result, you can set this to zero. However, if you want to allow this to take more time to get the result you're looking for, you can set it to 10. However, also, if you are working on a slower computer, this may take up a lot of time. And so this is just sort of allowing you to find a uh, happy medium here. So maybe you go with something like five to get a more accurate result while not taking up too much of your computing power. And the last option here is for selections. So you can draw selections in here. This is actually a very cool feature. Uh, you could draw a selection and you can have only the nodes inside the selection be affected. So if I come over here, click the drop down, you'll see it says simplify the part inside the selection, preserve the rest. So that's saying you want to simplify all the nodes inside the selection area. Or you can do the opposite by preserving the part inside the selection and simplifying the rest. So we'll show some examples of that in action a little bit later. I'm going to go with ignore any selection for now. Let's just run a quick test with these settings I have set up right now to see how this will simplify things. So come over here and click OK. And there you can see the path has simplified pretty considerably. So if I click on here, this was the original and this is the new path. So I mentioned that simplifying the path is good for strokes around text. Let me demonstrate that real quick. I'll come over here to my layers and click to create a new layer and name it stroke. So now I'll come back over here to the paths tab and let's just change the color of this real quick to a gold color and click OK. So first we're going to stroke the simplified path and we'll just go with the default values here. So five as the line width and we'll set this to line and click stroke. And let's come back here to layers and we're going to create another stroke layer. So stroke two, hit the enter key. Come back over here to paths and we'll come back to the original. And for this one, let's go with a red color and click stroke. Use the same settings, click stroke again. So I'll hit the M key on my keyboard to grab the move tool and hide both of these strokes. So you can see this was the version that was not simplified. And let me hide this. This is the simplified version. Let me also hide the original text. So the main thing you'll notice with this is that the curves around the P, for example, should be a little smoother on the simplified version. So you'll see here, for example, this part, there's almost like a line going on right there, whereas right here, it's a lot more smooth. So that's just one example. And same with the outside here. This part's a little bit more jagged, whereas this one is a bit smoother. So that's one example. Let's come over here to the next example. So here I have an ellipse that I drew earlier with the selection tool and then I converted it to a path. So I'll hit the B key and click on this. So you'll see even though it's a nice smooth ellipse, we have a bunch of nodes going on here. Let's say I wanted to preserve the nodes up top here and in the bottom, but I wanted to simplify the center part. What I can do is grab a selection tool such as the rectangle select tool and just click and drag on that middle area there and release my mouse. All right, once we have the rectangle drawn here, I'll come over to the Paths tab, right click on the path and go to Tools, Modify Path, Simplify. I'll keep all the values from the previous time we used this. However, for the bottom option here, how to use the selection, we're going to click the drop down and go with simplify the part inside the selection, preserve the rest. So that'll simplify everything inside that rectangle selection area and I'll click OK. So now I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that. I'll hit the B key to grab the paths tool and click on here. So everything inside the selection area should have been simplified, whereas everything outside should have been preserved. So if I click on here, you can kind of see where that selection area was. So this area on the inside was very simplified. That was a before, that's an after, and then everything else should have been preserved. If I hit Control Z, we could see the selection I drew actually went just through that last node there, which might explain why these two nodes were kept, or at least this one right here. All right, so I'll do one more example of how this plugin works. So let's come over here to this third composition. So as you can see here, I have a bunch of lines and I have a bunch of numbers marking these lines. These numbers are gonna be degrees. 
So you'll see the first one here is 180 degrees, so it's a flat line, and then it's going to rotate in 15 degree increments, so all the way up to 90 degrees. And I actually have a path created here on the line, and the path is going to be bent at 135 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what happens when you constrain the angle of this. So I'll come over here, right click, go to Tools, Modify Path, Simplify. So right here you'll see our corner angle threshold is set to 120 degrees, so that's this one right here. So what'll happen, or what should happen, is that the corner here will get smoothed out, it'll get more rounded, but it's only gonna happen if we allow some deviation here, since there is gonna have to be some significant deviation from the original. So I'm just gonna set this to a very high value of 500, and we'll set this to 120 for the corner angle threshold, and let's change the how to use the selection back to ignore. So I'll click OK. And there you'll see that the corner here is going to get rounded out so that 120 degrees is the threshold. And let's come back here and we're back on the original. We'll leave the simplified version. Right click, go to Tools, Modify Path, Simplify. So let's change this now to 90 degrees. And also in this case, sometimes it's good to allow the working level to be as high as possible. So we'll set that to 10. And I'll come over here and click OK. So this one is set to 90 degrees. So as you can see, a lot of curve is happening here towards the top. And then it's coming in to try to reach the final point here, the final node. So that's what happens there whenever you constrain the cornering angle. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.